Welcome everyone. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church in Eugene. We're empowered by love. We transform ourselves and we serve our world. The Unitarian Universalist Church in Eugene affirms the inherent worth and dignity of people of all races, ethnicities, genders, sexualities, disabilities, backgrounds, and beliefs. This congregation is committed to being a church where people with marginalized identities, particularly Black, Indigenous, and other people of color, transgender, non-binary, and LGBTQI plus people and disabled people can bring their whole selves and experience full inclusion. The ever ongoing work of countering racism, transphobia, homophobia, ableism, and other oppressions in ourselves, our church community, and the wider community is an essential part of who we are as a people of a justice-seeking faith. My name is Jennifer Hackett and my pronouns are she and her, and I am so proud to be the ministerial intern of this church this year. With me today is our music director, Mitch Davey, our collaborative pianist, Suzanne Giordano, our worship associate, Chris Olson, and behind the scenes working tech is the amazing Kat Johnson, now an official staff member, woohoo! <laughs> Welcome to all of you who have come seeking a place, seeking some meaning, seeking knowledge of how to continue to move forward in beloved community. Welcome. We have some announcements today. The Compassionate Connection Circle that used to meet after church on Sundays is now Thursday evenings at seven. Also, if you were looking for some light, whimsical time in your month, this Friday night we'll be game playing with the ministerial intern at Whimsy Hour, 6 o'clock. And as a reminder, there's always a virtual coffee hour that happens right after services on Sunday. This service is our inaugural run for closed captioning. We're really excited to provide this accessibility option. Bear in mind that this live automated captioning will not always be 100% accurate. <laughs> so for computer users, captions can be turned on and off, adjusted via the live captioning bottom button that has appeared at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Captioning on phones should come up automatically, but we'll have more information for you about that by the next service. If you have questions or comments, you're always welcome to email cat at tech at uuugene.org after the service. The Youth Art Show is coming up. The deadline is the last day of this month. For all of these things that we've been discussing, you can find the information um, in our newsletter that have, comes out every Wednesday. If you're newly joining us this week, you're welcome to sign up for our newsletter. Um, it's on the homepage of our website. Beloved community member Fred Masari's memorial is today. You can also find that information in the newsletter. At this time, we will be dropping the visitor form into the chat. If you're joining us for one of your first times and have never filled out our visitor form together, we invite you to do so so that we can learn more about you. That's being dropped into the chat and you're welcome to wait until after service so that you can be fully present with us here. Welcome. We're glad you're here. We light this chalice today, symbol of our faith, with a joy that the world cannot take away, a joy to be together here in this sacred space of our beloved community. We are building a new way, and hopefully we are feeling stronger every day. If we are working to be free and feeding our every need, we will need to start with love, and the seeds of love begin right here. Let's plant some seeds of love today. This reading is by Reverend Dr. David Breeden, here for Beloved Community. 
May I be all in the beloved community. May I be all in despite the challenges. May I be all here, the beloved community. May I be ready for the beauty because I long for the possibilities. Yes, I am here, the beloved community. May I see the beauty of you in community, of us in community. May we be the beauty of beloved community. May we be the dream together. We join here for beloved community. Beloved community is our theme this month and it is no accident that it's falling on Black History Month. If you saw my amusing contribution this last week in our weekly connections newsletter, you'll know that when I first started going to UU Church and I heard about the Beloved Community Committee at my own church, I thought it was something for couples, <laughs> you know, because of the word beloveds, a person who is much loved, like you and like me, like every one of us wants to be. I did not know about the phrase or that Josiah Royce coined it in the 18th century and that the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King made it famous when he talked about his vision of a multicultural family arising from a divided America. We are arising from a divided America still, or perhaps again, or maybe both. We are the beloved community and we always have room to open our circle wider. I've been talking with a number of you lately about one of my favorite church topics, welcoming and hospitality. I've learned about Robbie Seeger, who was a youth here in the Pacific Northwest region about a decade ago. And it was his desire to always be welcoming to the next unknown guest at any UU function. And it inspired what is now known as the Robbie rule. The rule is simple. It requires that in any circle, an accessible place be kept open for the next person coming. At a meeting, standing around at coffee hour, whomever that next person might be. For if we are living into the values of our faith, if we are welcoming people into our open circle, the circle of those of us who hold these values, our values, we will continue to grow and grow. And when we grow this circle of faith, we begin to heal the world and its brokenness around us. Because I'm working remotely from Nashville, which is a very diverse city, many of you have very gently tried to explain to me about the diversity situation in Eugene. <laughs> how the college holds most of the diversity for the town, how there are so few BIPOC people in Eugene. I'm using the term BIPOC here to distinguish Black, comma, Indigenous, comma, and other people of color. This relatively new term is gaining in widespread use to acknowledge that the historic experience of many, if not most, of our Black ancestors in our country was one of being brought here as slaves, owned by other people who benefited from their labor, and they were usually white. And the historic experience of most of our indigenous population is one of having their lands, their culture, their family members and their language stolen from them, again, to benefit white folks. And other people of color may identify with those experiences some of the time, but generally those are unique experiences to the first two groups of people. So BIPOC. As a beloved community, always in the making. We are asked to consider some things about the way things have been for some of our beloveds. We are asked to begin to dismantle white supremacy culture. For some of you, this may be a new term, white supremacy culture, as it applies to you directly. Please do not tune out. This applies to most of you and to me. 
white supremacy culture has much more to do with most of us and much less to do with the Ku Klux Klan or the Proud Boys or any other of the over the top out in the open sort of ilk. White supremacy culture is cultural racism or how a dominant culture is founded upon and then shapes society's norms, values, beliefs, and standards to validate and advantage white people. Dr. Peggy McIntosh wrote in her seminal piece in 1988, Unpacking the Invisible Knapsack. It's a list of privileges she never realized that she enjoyed until she examined her everyday privileges that her BIPOC neighbors did not enjoy. She realized things like, I can arrange to protect my children most of the time from people who might not like them. And I am never asked to speak for all of the people in my racial group and many, many more very identifiable experiences of being white. Dr. McIntosh helps to shine the light on the privileges of white folks never even knew they were experiencing before. Dr. Tema Okun shines the light on characteristics that have allowed this cultural racism to continue. This is critical. For how will we know what to shift if we do not know what is perpetuating the problem? Dr. Okun tells us one of the purposes of listing the characteristics of white supremacy culture is to point out how organizations which unconsciously use these characteristics as their norms and standards, they make it difficult, if not impossible, to open the door to other cultural norms and standards. As a result, many of our organizations, while saying that we want to be multicultural, really only allow other people and other cultures to come in if they adapt or conform to our already existing cultural norms. Being able to identify and name the cultural norms and standards that you want is the first step for making room for a truly multicultural organization. We want a multicultural organization. We want to embody the beloved community. That's one of our values. You may be wondering, well, yeah, but what does that have to do with me here in very white Eugene, Oregon? Well, let me help you with an analogy. When young families with young children are shopping for a church, we know what they're looking for. In addition to warmth, friendliness, and values that mirror their own, what they are looking for in a church is other families with children. They want to see that there will be other people there like them. And so we can make our congregation welcoming to families and young children by having robust faith programming for young children, which brings in young children, which brings in more young children. Do you see? This is not a complex formula, especially in a university town. This is Mohandas Gandhi asking us to be the change that we want to see in the world, to ensure that all people know that we at UUCE are a safe community, that we will not do any additional harm, because adding to the harm that is piled up by living in a white supremacist culture, it wouldn't help to build our beloved community. And Dr. Okun has left us a roadmap for how to do it. For example, the white supremacy characteristics of perfectionism, sense of urgency and defensiveness, they have antidotes of developing a culture of appreciation, having realistic work plans, and understanding our own fears. There are 15 of these characteristics of white supremacy culture, and each of them have antidotes. It's the great news. It's the best news we may hear this year. We can shift a culture. The other roadmap I've been following that's unique to us, Unitarian Universalists, is the UUA's widening the Circle of Concern document that was published one year ago this month. 
So for three years, the Commission on Institutional Change went around to UU congregations all over the country, interviewing UUs, asking them their stories, understanding where the issues lie. Essentially, they found out that we, collectively across the country, despite our good intentions, we don't always know how to be as welcoming as we need to be to our BIPOC, trans, and disabled communities. And we maybe need to up our game with newcomers in general. They also told us eerily last February, before the pandemic began, that we needed to start doing church in a hybrid way to increase our accessibility to those who are challenged physically or by night driving or by geography or by fear of the unknown. This is our work to open our circle a little wider to all of the beloved community, those who are known to us and those yet unknown to us. And to open the circle by reducing our white supremacy characteristics specifically. Last week, the UUA provided us a Valentine's Day treat, a side with love service. Each speaker who was featured was part of one of the groups mentioned in the Widening the Circle report. And each one told us what they needed. And earlier this month, we heard from the Reverend Jill McAllister on Beloved Community. She is, I believe, the congregation's first ever ministerial intern, which gives me a lot of confidence in you as a teaching congregation. Reverend Jill explained how people experience and engage cultural differences. And today, I open the service with a newly constructed UUCE affirmation of the dignity of all people. It's been under construction recently with stakeholders from a variety of groups to eliminate any ambiguity as to what this church stands for. I'm gonna read it to you again. The Unitarian Universalist Church in Eugene affirms the inherent worth and dignity of people of all races, ethnicities, genders, sexualities, disabilities, backgrounds, and beliefs. This congregation is committed to being a church where people with marginalized identities, particularly black, indigenous and other people of color, transgender, non-binary and LGBTQI plus people and disabled people can bring their whole selves and experience full inclusion. The ever ongoing work of countering racism, transphobia, homophobia and ableism and other oppressions in ourselves, in our church community, and in the wider community is an essential part of who we are as a people of a justice-seeking faith. That's us. So today I invite you to do three things. Come join us at a brainstorming session the first Sunday of next month at the Challenging Racism meeting at 1130 to continue the conversation together about how we want to be this change how we can dismantle in a ripple effect, the white supremacy culture within ourselves, and then out to our church, and then out to the community, and then out to the world. I leave you with Dr. Okun's document on how to dismantle white supremacy culture, the 15 characteristics and their antidotes, which is being dropped into the chat right now. Then come engage after reading it in the conversation on March 7th. Finally, there's a nationwide conversation on this topic happening with hundreds, if not thousands of UUs this coming Saturday and registration is still open. There is a small sliding scale fee to attend and UUCE will pay for it if you need any assistance to go at all. Just contact me at intern at uugene.org. We can have a wide reaching effect, UUCE. We can be the beloved community that we want to see in the world. We all have moments in our lives that we want to share with our community, our ups and our downs that make up our lives and our loves. Please join us in the chat at this time with your joys and sorrows that you wish to share with the community. For technology that makes our service more accessible, <clears throat> 
for birthdays of our beloveds, for new jobs and new loves and old loves. We are thankful for the nearly 500,000 dead of COVID in our country and for their families, for loved ones far away, for all of the Texans this week, for all who are cold and without basic needs today, and for all of the other sorrows that we hold in our hearts, we hold you. You are not alone in your sorrow. For all of the joys and sorrows that have been named by beloveds today, and for those that you hold in your hearts and all this week, we pray with you. We breathe with you. We work to enact change with you and for you. You are not alone today. Each Sunday offering in February will be given to Lane County Mutual Aid, which works from a belief in abundance, class, solidarity, anti-racism, and disability justice, striving for collective liberation. In a crisis, we must help each other. LCMA provides material support to people in need because of the pandemic and the wildfires, focusing half of their resources on Black, Indigenous, and people of color. Our offerings will be sent to the NAACP to support this effort. Your offering will now be gratefully received. May these offerings of our lives be transformed, that our lives may be transformed, and that our beloved community may be transformed. The words of our child's extinguishing today are adapted from Starhawk's community, community means strength. We are all longing to go home to some place we have never been, a place half remembered and half envisioned that we can only catch glimpses of from time to time. Community. Community means strength that joins our strength to do the work that needs to be done arms to hold us when we falter, a circle of healing, a circle of friends, some place where we can be free. May it be so.